I mean, he didn't really like. I didn't really know what to take from that video, but uh, yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. I don't know if he like doesn't See, I don't know if they don't know it is the question. Oh, really? You think it's it's intentional? Someone, the bench said, politics is 90% wheat and 10% house cars. 90% what? Oh. They're hearing us talking? Which one's hottest? Should auto should auto mute on that screen or on that screen. Yo, we hear you. Shout out to Texas twice. Uh oh. What do you mean? Did you dream about me? Hope for the best. They took x-rays to make sure it wasn't a battery. Yeah. And, uh, they said, yeah, it'll just, we'll poop it out. That's what, uh, Ali's, Ali's sister, I think something happened like that. She All right, welcome into the basement. On today's show, we're going to be talking about crazy laws coming out of Florida, banning CBDCs. We've got extreme Bitcoin volatility coming tomorrow with another Fed uh, FOMC meeting. Uh, we've got uh, all of the yum yum when it comes to the Arbitrum airdrop coming out here soon. All this and more on today's episode of Blockchain Basement. I love it. Bum, 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 bum. You ready for this? <laughs> I'm ready. Welcome. Um, if you're going to screw me, at least pull my hair. Okay. 
Hell yeah. What do you got? Oh, God. Oh, God. They could start chopping off fingers. They're yeah. like, give me your seed phrase, but yeah. I don't know it. About to give the numbers out. Um, and I was like, no, hang up the phone yeah. right now. Where, like when it dropped in 2020, was it like exciting? Four to 600,000. Do do the think generational so signals are now. Do do now. Think level. So I don't even know if we're going to get back below there. But if we do, that's kind of where we... Uh, Hey, welcome in, everybody. We're going to have a really good show for you guys today. Uh, shout out to the, those of you who were in here early uh, and heard a little bit of the uh, the pre-show show mm, right. uh, where we were talking before the mics were uh, supposed to be live, and they were live, I guess. But, uh, you know, shout out to you guys that got, got in on that. So, got the alpha. Uh, Husker Dan, <laughs> Nick... Nico Dopolois, whatever, Simon Scott, Blazing 2JZ, Fluffy the Sheep, Crypto Shark, Gary Karma, Kino, Anthony Ackley, Captain Daddy, TJ Don't. Oh, gosh. I'm not going to read that. Uh, <laughs> They're talking about the chicken salad. Oh, the chicken salad. Oh, make a chicken salad wrap. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Yo, 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 LJGG, Crypto 7 Rex, Manly Crypto, Manawalk, Bud Lightyear, Cryptos 7 Rex. I already said that one. Ralphie 227, Spring Break Forever. Forever? <laughs> Forever, ever? Uh, Poon, 78 Div, Corey Harden. Uh, congrats on the baby, Corey. I saw yeah, that picture the yeah. other day. Another well uh, Bringing another girl into the world. Good good on you. Hope everything is going well there. No, I'm not drunk. I'm not drunk at all. You would know if I was drunk. I don't oh, drink, yeah. guys. Uh, yeah. I drink water. I drink lots of water. Um, so, yeah, we're going to be talking about some interesting things today. Uh, I guess we'll just jump right in with uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis proposes mm -hmm. laws to ban CBDCs. A uh, legislative proposal from Florida Governor and possible Republican U.S. presidential candidate Ron DeSantis would prohibit the use of natural, national bank, national central bank digital currencies as money within the state. Uh, today, you know, he said the proposed law would also prohibit Florida the use of a CBDC issued by any overseas central bank. The governor's statement calls on other states to adopt similar legislation. Uh, in addition to privacy concerns, DeSantis said a federal CBDC would diminish the role of community banks and credit unions, which, yeah, that's 100% true. That's exactly what uh, the central banks are going after. Uh, Nick, I know no. you guys talked about this a little bit on the morning stream. Do uh, you have any strong thoughts on this one way or the other? Well, I mean, DeSantis pull that mic up. Pull that mic up. Oh, Get up in there. There you go. Oh, Get by the way, there. thanks for hosting. I know I saw uh, some people loved it, some people hated it. So I guess you did something right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. It's always my last time hosting the blockchain basement. Love it. So, yeah, I mean, look, DeSantis 2024 for sure. Um, but this law kind of lacks teeth because while states have a lot of of say in what happens in their states, like they run their elections and what have you, they don't get to say what the money is. They don't mint the money. That's what the feds do. And the mm -hmm. feds are pretty particular about that. So states don't have their own monies. They all use this, we all use the same money. So uh, it, it, it's kind of more of just, um, it's posturing. I hate to say it, like I'm very bullish on Ron DeSantis. I, I like a lot of what he has to say, but it is just posturing. It's kind of an empty threat. They're really, I think the maximum they could do to get to not use a federal, like if the feds go full CBDC, there is no dollar anymore. There is no cash. I don't know how they could get around it. I, I really, really don't. So it's, it's murky. He probably was just lobbing a grenade to start a uh, Supreme Court battle. Mm. So start a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just basically to get the court battle geared up to get, lawyers hired to get some of the think tanks working on their proposals, working on their arguments for um, pushing back a CBDC. So I see uh, there's some, uh, some of the haters from the morning show have leaked into the chat. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not a Bitcoin maxi. I, I think it's pretty obvious to anyone. Dead. So yeah, but, uh, everybody knows Nick loves hex, right? Yeah. That's his favorite coin. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. We love you, Nick. You can, go, you can be max, you can be maximalish with me all day. Uh, I don't. I'm not a maximalist, but I do lean heavier and heavier towards Bitcoin uh, as more time goes on. But I do uh, love alts to make more Bitcoin. You know, mm. that's how. I, and I, I really like Ethereum, and I like a lot of other things that are doing creative things within the space. Um, real quick, though, if you guys don't mind, we got about 200 people in here. If you could hey. smash the like button really quick, yes. so we can get more people in here. Uh, we know the goal every day is to try to get 420 likes. Uh, if we start early, uh, then you know. You know, you can you can start early. That's we all, get a party, yeah. a pizza party. 
Yeah. God, I still owe you guys that ice cream, don't I? Yeah, you do. Remember uh, TJ when we were doing the show and there was like 50 people in here? I do. I, do I was going to say, I, I when you guys said there was three or 400 people concurrent when I came in here, I was like, wait, there's not 50 anymore? Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Well, the basement is growing. And if you guys, yeah. All you guys, actually, we, we are going to do something special for the anybody who subs pre-10K. So I think we're at around 8,000 yeah. subscribers right now. If you do subscribe right now, uh, whether, you know, and I, if, you're on, if you're in the actual basement, if you could hop over to YouTube and hit the like button, we always yeah. appreciate that. Uh, it might be coming. I might end up having to go YouTube only here pretty soon, which would be sad Ooh. times, but uh, it would be good for the YouTube channel. But either way, if you guys, uh, you guys are the OG. So if you can uh, subscribe now, pre 10 K, uh, we're going to do a little something special uh whenever we get there so uh and speaking of something special you guys know we talk about dollar cost averaging a lot on this show i wanted to mm -hmm. uh show this graph because this was pretty powerful this shows the power of dca you know justin people who started DCAing into really? bitcoin at the 69k all-time high are now up 10 percent. so this shows the graph of if you were buying daily since the top Basically, all the way through here, now, you know, you would be, your average cost basis would be, you know, in profit, basically. Price, huh. you know, USD close. So, let I mean, me, it let showed... me tag Crypto Weatherman in this tweet real quick. Well, oh, Crypto Weatherman? Uh -oh, he, he blocked me over this subject. Uh-oh, what happened? Well, he says I, DCAing yeah. doesn't make any sense, and it's a bad strategy. Called math, he's, bro. He's that dumb. I said at least his name is similar to his TA, because if a rock is wet... It is raining outside, and you make a great webinar. <laughs> so fantastic work, sir. Yeah. Carry on. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, chemistry, bro, you'll get a you'll get a super special reward. You're you're like a second, third part. You and Corey Harden are probably like part of the show at this point. Seriously, so, yeah. Uh, you yeah. you get a. I'll make something super special just for you. So this graph. Yeah. Basically, this is saying they spent the same amount of money each time they DCA'd all the way through. On the same time frame, right? Mm -hmm. Correct. That, daily this, time frame. Okay. This is doing it daily. So that means it, like for people that ask, oh, should I buy when it's at 25 or 28? You know, like a lot of there was right. a lot of questions I noticed, like, do you still DCA when the price pumps like that? And it's like, mm -hmm. well, yeah, that's the whole point of DCA is you buy regardless of the price. You're not buying based on the price, you're buying based on your set schedule. Yeah. So if you said, you know, oh, I'm gonna buy Ten dollars a day every day since the beginning of the you know since the absolute peak sixty nine k and you did it all through twenty twenty two the whole way down you you would have bought the bottom you would have bought you know a pretty good amount under twenty k because I mean you can see here this is you know this range when we really bottomed right in here you would have been buying that entire time you would have been buying on the way back up too yeah but then it just goes to show once it made that move from twenty five to twenty eight that pretty much which I think we're still sitting at twenty eight I haven't checked. Uh, um, we're, oh, yeah, we're okay, 28.3, so 28 or 28.288, oh, well, 28251. It's but, changing by the second. Yeah. But it is up a little bit more over 28, which is uh, good to see, holding strong. I think if we can hold strong, the Fed meeting tomorrow is going to say a lot. Uh, do you have any predictions, Nick, on raise or uh, hold for the Fed meet, reading, meet, meeting tomorrow? Um. No, I I really don't know what the, I don't think they know what they're nobody gonna knows do. what they're going to do. I'm holding to mine, which is I think they will still do 25 basis points, a 0.25 percent raise, uh, and then stop after that. Yeah. Oh, uh, what do you think, Drew? Um, I think it's going to be 25 base points, but I want them to do 50 base points just so we see an absolute collapse of derivatives, all the good stuff. I want to see this candle lit. Um, and them to experience the full fruition of monetary irresponsibility. So I hope that they try to be super aggressive, but I know they won't. It'll probably be 25 base points and then nothing to follow after that. Um, yeah, if they only raise it by 25 base points, I think, you know, Bitcoin will have a short term pullback. But I don't think we're going to see 20 from it. So, so. Yeah. Anthony Ackley said, "You got Drew got dressed in the dark. <laughs> no, this is, I chose to dress this way. Yep. I, I, uh, I prefer to to not match and to be kind of chaotic. So, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that the Fed, I mean, obviously we know that the Fed is compromised, but I, I believe that there's so much political influence on the Fed now. They are scrambling to fix the economy while Joe Biden is still president. Mm -hmm. And they are they don't know that they're still pushing the yoke forward while the plane is it's already going down. Like they they don't they have really, really, really overcorrected too much. It's like speed wobble, right? Like we know what speed wobble is. Like when you're going too fast and something gets oh. out of alignment, and you, a little bit of here, whoa, and now you're, you're toast. We're in this kind of thing. You can see that by these charts, by these graphs, these things about like 
the credit issuance is like peaks and valleys and then flat and then just going up like a freaking meme coin. It's mm -hmm. sick. Governments should not be doing that. And so when you see these type of wild overcorrections, you see money printing credit and blah, 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 blah. You know that we are in a speed wobble situation and the wheels are coming off. Yeah. Mm. I think uh, either way, no matter what happens tomorrow, we're going to see some volatility around it. I mean, I yeah. still think we'll see a slight raise, which will pull yep. the price down a little bit. Uh, if they don't raise, if there's no action tomorrow, I think things just go nuts. I mean, I think we'll oh, yeah. we'll blast. You know, I mean, I think I don't know this. But that would be so upsetting yeah. if they don't raise and we go over thirty. Like, I've done as much as I can in this valley, <laughs> but I want more and I want the price to stay low. It's too damn high. Yeah, you know. Oh, I have a question sad. from White Girl Probs. Is okay, it, is it worse to have ten percent plus inflation into twenty twenty four or a market crash caused by rate increases? I think that's a really good question, uh, and that I think that's really the question the Fed is facing right now. Do the problem with ten percent inflation into twenty twenty four is what's 2025 26 you know you, you're yeah. running the risk of runaway or what they call hyperinflation kicking in very very quickly where people start to lose confidence in the dollar now that there's alternatives out there but i think that's that is the position we're in of high inflation um or extremely strong market correction which we know the politicians don't want market correction they want they'd much rather deal with inflation because they're close to the printer and you know they're going to cover their budgets and then you know the, it's the everyday person that really feels inflation so i i would say it depends on what uh class you're in unfortunately you know if you've mm -hmm. got if you hold a lot of assets 10% inflation isn't that bad to you because your assets will inflate as well. If, you know, now if the market corrects and wipes out a lot of capital and, you know, you have to actually change your lifestyle and start adjusting to reality, you're not going to like that. You'd much rather have 10% inflation than a market correction. Now, if you're an everyday citizen trying to make a difference for your life and your family and trying to, you know, get ahead of that curve, you're saying, give me a market correction all day long. I can't deal with just this death by a thousand cuts of every time I go to the grocery store, everything's more expensive, even though I'm not <laughs> able to get, you know, a, yeah. a substantial raise. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough question, but, uh, I would say they're going to choose the inflation over the market correction. At least that's what history has shown us thus yeah. far. Uh, and that's all we really have to go on of is history. So, uh, yeah, you better uh, learn to live with it and get used to it because uh, it's not going anywhere. Somebody, I think it was Mark Ma, shared a chart to, I think it was him that posted it. I don't know if it was today or yesterday, showing uh, the amount of what kids that out earn their parents by the same age, you know, over time. Basically, like when you're 30, you're making more than your parents were when they were 30. Uh, that's been on a steady decline percentage wise oh, yeah. since about the 40s. Uh, yep. Every child or generation is making less than their parents were over time, even though production has gone through the roof. So, mm -hmm. uh, and again, we can look at those charts all day long on uh, 1970. But that brings us back to this this question here. That's a perfect setup for this. And this is kind of where I'm feeling these days, Don. Oh, yeah. All every time I think about taking profit. I think about where I would put that profit. Yep. There's nothing I'd rather buy than BTC and alts right now. Nothing is set up better for the current macro situation than our little bubble. And I, I tend to agree with that 100%. Uh, we were talking about it a little bit yesterday. So uh, do you guys agree, disagree? Oh, yeah. yeah. I agree so much because, again, I don't know if I, I brought this up on one of the other streams. But me and Drew, we have a lot of our money in crypto and not in any US dollars. For me, it's like 96%. Right. And so... I was the same thing. I'm like, well, even if I took profits, I feel the most safe with money in Bitcoin and then alts for speculative plays. But like right now, I, I know how many Bitcoin are going to be. Uh, you know, then you just go down the line of why Bitcoin's great and why the US dollar isn't necessarily so great. So I feel the same way. I'm like, well, shoot, well, I guess do I put it into some <clears throat> stocks, I guess, to maybe diversify. But right now I'm, I'm feeling the same way. Mm -hmm. Feeling the same way in that um, Bitcoin feels the most set up for long-term success as well as safety. Um, just cause I feel like I own my own money. Right. You know, it's just, yeah. yeah, no, I think that's a great take and I agree hundred uh, percent. Chemistry said to sell it into 3d printing equipment. So that's another, that was some, a point I was going to make too, you know, obviously, you know, we talk about real estate a lot. If you, if you're talking big portions, there's things you can do. If you're talking a few hundred dollars here or there, there's a lot, you know, like, and I know everybody's not taking, tens and you know hundreds of thousands of dollars of profit but a couple thousand dollars of profit's a lot of money to a lot of you guys so if you can put it into 
a computer that you can write and blog and edit and do stuff with, you know, like he mentioned, a 3D printer, anything that allows you to uh, kind of further yourself, grow and develop. I mean, if you're a musician buying an, a new instrument, you know, a guitar, or I use computers a lot because you can edit videos, you can, you know, research crypto, you can do the, a computer becomes an asset you can use to generate more cash flow. You know, and then through that cash flow, you can use it to buy more crypto, which is you can then take more profits into more cash flow producing assets. So the cash flow producing asset doesn't always have to be a house. It can be a tool that allows you to, you know, if you're a graphic designer, you know, create NFTs or edit video or record something or write a blog or, you know, host a space or do, you know, there's a variety of different things. So I just, I wanted to make that point because I know we were talking about this on Around the Blockchain the other day. Uh, Jason Casper was talking about, oh, anybody can, you know, you can put into farm you know go and buy and he said anybody can grow potatoes in their front yard why do they spend money to make their grass look green just go buy some potatoes and start growing potatoes out there uh and you can start farming blah 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 but everybody doesn't want to be a farmer you know which is not i'm not saying there's nothing wrong with it like i think it's a great thing to do but do things that align with your skill set and things that you're passionate about if you really like you know learning you know somebody's doing a challenge right now where they're with chat gpt4 where they're basically tasking them with creating a growth uh based business okay i'm going to give you a hundred dollars how do we grow that every single day into more and more and more obviously it's got him you know building uh an online platform and a uh, uh, paid newsletter and all that sort of stuff so there's a lot of things you can do out there to grow and develop and enhance yourself in your life and get yourself ahead of that cash flow curve other than just by uh you know buying you know stuff to start a farm you know it could be a car it could be a tool it could be a pressure washer you can go run a pressure washing business it could be something to wash some windows it could be anything that you could use to generate money it could be a hands-on thing or it could be a mental thing so i just wanted to mm -hmm. put that out there for perspective i have one thing to say about this as yeah. well um if you guys know the book rich dad poor dad mm -hmm. that's like the general gist of that whole book is buy assets not liabilities buy things that you can turn into more money and the author, Robert Kiyosaki, mm -hmm. I think that's how you say it. He actually says that he buys Bitcoin because he doesn't trust the U.S. dollar. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. just like straight on with that point amidst all of the uncertainty with the banks. Every, like buy Bitcoin. Don't go don't go spend your money on clothes. Put it put ten dollars in Bitcoin and then it'll be there forever, whether mm -hmm. it goes up or down. Great point. Yeah. And then and, and cash flow is what Brian and I were talking about it earlier today. It's the number one way, in my opinion, to combat inflation, because if you've got cash flow producing businesses, when inflation goes up, your prices go up and you're just taking more of that worthless paper in. And if you can turn it into something a little bit less worthless, uh, then then you can get there. So I said, uh, I don't know if you all watch BTC dominance today get, but we hit the range high for BTC D. We're seeing alts kick off a bit today. Oh, let me look at that. I have been watching the dominance. Check it uh, I improved my outfit. I changed it. Oh, oh, there you go. Just to add more a color. <clears throat> yeah. If Drew doesn't, if Drew isn't dressed like a Grand Theft Auto character, and he's not, he's just not feeling it. That, that day. day's wrong. Yeah. It shouldn't have happened it's if not I'm good. not dressed yeah. that way. So, or a hacker man. I've yeah. seen hacker you in that man. hacker man outfit, <laughs> all yeah. black, yeah. the glasses on. He's got the hoodie yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Computer. It's awesome. I got to add to this. Hold on. Let's see. Great book. All right. Yeah. So, so let me show you guys why you hear us talk about this a lot. I found this good graph. We'll come to it in just a second. Uh, you, you'll hear Drew and I talk about this. Nick talk about this a lot when you're, we're talking about the derivatives market and how scary it is and how unknown it all is like the, the true money supply it could be in the quadrillions of dollars because mm -hmm. of this, all this paper money that's contracts on top of contracts perpetuals you know uh, rehypothecation of the same money over and over and over and over uh and this is what's going on with all these banks right now i mean if you start to look at the details of some of these merger buyout agreements and it's gonna be two years before they know some of the information on some of the stuff it's because they have no idea who owes who and how much it's going to take them such a long time to like you think it's taking a long time to untangle this ftx stuff Silicon Valley Bank, you know, uh, Signature Bank, all these banks are so interwoven with all this debt, it's insane. And it all bleeds up to the biggest people who own all this, all these assets. Now they're derivatives, but it's just, it's all on paper. If, they, they, if you ever try to bring any of this stuff into reality, it all falls apart really fast. And this is where you start to see a lot of the big power players where a lot of the, you know they consolidate this money into. So I saw this from Gaber Gerbax. Uh, the global derivatives market is a two plus quadrillion 
dollars, which is two thousand tr over two thousand trillion dollars. Which again, these numbers are just wonky. You know, it's stupid. Yeah. But that's why they continually have to print more and more and more to keep this going. He says it's a ticking time bomb. When banks fail, derivatives won't just unwind in an orderly fashion. Few people understand this. Here are these are some of the top U.S. banks ranked by their derivatives exposure, double digit trillions. <clears throat> so we're talking Goldman Sachs here, fifty three trillion dollars on their books worth of derivatives. J.P. Morgan Chase, fifty trillion dollars. Citibank, forty seven trillion dollars. Bank of America, nineteen trillion dollars. Wells Fargo, twelve trillion dollars. I mean it. State Street Bank, you know, two trillion. HSBC, one point three trillion. BNY Mellon, one point one trillion. U.S. Bank, PNC Bank, TD Bank, you know, all Truist Bank down here. And mm -hmm. the, you know, it's just this is just insane. The amount of, you know, off the book kind of money. Which this is just for an example. This would be, you know, like Drew has a loan and Nick takes out a loan to bet against when Drew's going to repay his loan. Then I take out a loan to bet against when Nick's going to repay his or take profit on his contract that says when Drew's going to repay his loan. So there's all this paperwork that's going on, but no money's actually changing hands, but yeah. it's showing as assets on the books. So these banks, based against these assets that they'll never really be able to call in, I mean, some of them, you know, they can call in small portions here and there, but they're never really going to be able to call in most of these larger things, uh, and that's what causes these banks to go under. It's just terrifying when you think about putting money in a bank these days. Yeah. Uh, you know, we got Selkis here saying, uh, "Good morning and Godspeed to our fearless leaders rooting for the one more run of the U.S. dollar in the banks, just yeah. one last dance." You know, we got one more in us, don't we? <laughs> uh, yeah, which is great, uh, great show, by the way. If you are documentary or whatever you want to call it, if you guys haven't seen it on Netflix on uh, Jordan's in, in the Bulls six, I really uh, like how Yellen's face planted on. Uh on Jordan's yeah, body she, there. She, she really fits nicely. <laughs> it does. She, he wears yeah. it well, I guess. Absolutely. You know? uh, but yeah, they're they're uh, looking at pushing us into another really uh, precarious spot. And when you look at these kind of derivatives on the books for people, you know, yeah, sure, J.P. Morgan, City, and Bank of America, they're too big to fail. You know, like they won't let them fail because, yeah, $50 trillion starts to get wiped out. You know, that's loans to other governments. That's loans to our government. That's yeah. loans on top of loans on top of loans. That does stem throughout the entire world, um, and if it's become a big BS game, I guess at this point where it's like, oh well, it was kind of the question: like, do we want to have runaway inflation or do we want to have the system collapse? Because those are our two options, and we can't. There is no fixing this system. It's so far beyond broken. There's nothing we can do to make it any better, other, in my opinion, other than just exiting the system and building a new money system, which is what. Bitcoin and crypto really is, in my opinion. So, yeah. uh, I mean, what do you, uh, when you see something like this, Nick, $53 trillion in derivatives by just one bank, another 50 by another, you know, so basically you're talking $100 trillion just by two banks. Uh, yeah. What what goes through your mind? Um, really is, the, the interesting part is how big the fall off is after the fifth bank. Yeah. Mm. You go from double, you go from 12 trillion to two yeah that's consolidation absolutely and this is um uh, there's a book called uh anti-fragility and it basically talks about how when you try to make a system to where there's no bad outcomes you inoculate it from um you've basically caused a super bug to create one giant bad outcome yep mm. so what we what you're looking at that, that chart right there excuse me that list right there shows you which uh which of these Jenga pieces is going to fall out first? Everything in the top five. There's some sort of problem baked into those top five that we don't know what it is yet because we've tried to sort out every single possible bad income to where no one loses money, everyone's covered, everything's fine. Whereas you contrast that to all the fallout that happened with crypto in 2022, people got scorched. Mm -hmm. There's people in this room who lost money that got scorched. But guess what? The system took the lick and our immune system has now boosted. Right. Whereas TradFi has been taking a steady stream of antibiotics since 1971, and now they have a giant superbug in their gut. Mm. And they don't know it, and they can't fix it. Yeah, I agree. I mean, basically what you're saying there, like the crypto market, blockchain, it, it's a, it is a free market, so there was a lot of pain. There was a lot of damage. A lot of people got fortunes wiped out, 
But now that we're going to correct, we're not going to make the same mistake again. You know, like for in the example with banks, it's making bad loans, risky loans. Yep. The yep. problem is every single time that system's ready to correct and the government comes in and prints a bunch of money to stop the system from failing, they just continue on the same pattern, uh, which is what gets us here. He kind of breaks it down. And this is this is what's interesting is all these banks are telling you, oh, there's this many billions of dollars that they have in assets, but they're not mentioning the, the right. derivatives market at all. Right. So Credit Suisse just went under, had 39 trillion of off balance, off balance sheet derivatives exposure. We don't know, one, whether it's all Delta neutral, two, whether it's getting picked up by UBS, three, which countries unwind it could impact, the chain reaction of bank unwinds could, could become potentially catastrophic. Uh, which again, you know, the Bank of International Settlements estimates that there's a combined 52 plus trillion off balance sheet dollar denominated debt among non banks outside of the US and non US banks. In case of non orderly de derivatives wind downs, this could become extremely problematic. Yeah. So these are non uh, US banks, non US uh, really bank entities that are that have loans in US dollars but so this if it starts going sideways it's going to start going sideways really quick uh and it gets you know really really problematic i mean here's another kind of reference just to put it in perspective you know G global gdp and this was back i think when did you, this is in december 2018 global gdp 75 trillion dollars Global assets, 200, 270 trillion. Debt, 270 trillion. So basically a wash there. Global derivatives, 1500 trillion, which is again <laughs> when they started getting into the quadrillions, which were just, which is just ridiculous now yeah. that we're in, you know, th and these are all conservative estimations because there's so much going on here and they really don't know the answer to how much there really is in derivatives. Mm. So one, you know, 1500 trillion in derivatives, 0.7 trillion in silver, 7.6 trillion in gold. So there's that that'll put it in perspective. 7 trillion in gold, 1500 trillion in fake paper money out there that's floating <laughs> around. Uh, well, and we wonder and people wonder why we say it's not going to end well. I mean, it's just going to be rough. Did you see the sushi swap news? Yeah, I did see that. Uh sushi swap got served uh, with an SEC subpoena, I'm not surprised there. There's yeah. serving subpoenas to everybody. Yeah. And to, it's more interesting what the context of it was, what they're trying to do. It's probably just to get as much KYC information on their customers as possible. <laughs> so, <laughs> and Sushi Swap isn't a U.S. based company, as far as I know. Yeah, and aren't they? I mean, isn't it Dex? So, I mean, what can they? It is. Yeah, it's very tough. I mean, they cannot comply with it, and you know, now they could say like, "Oh, Americans can't use Sushi Swap," but. Yeah. <laughs> what if do you remember when Larry Fink said uh, that we should tokenize uh, uh, assets like this like two yes. weeks ago mm -hmm. maybe Larry Fink sees this unwinding this chaotic unwinding of the derivatives market actually coming so he's priming the population to accept the fact that he's going to tokenize the derivatives to shift them into another platform. Yeah, I think that's a very uh, reasonable theory to be, you know, rolling with right now. I mean, it seems like a lot of the people that created this system, they know it's starting to run its course at this point. They know they can only prolong the inevitable for so much longer. So it's mo they're in find a new solution mode right now. And if it it could be using blockchain to tokenize a lot of these other things. Now, they're not going to use Bitcoin. They're going to want to try to accumulate as much of that for themselves. And that's why a lot of people are speculating on, oh, are they going to use a different blockchain? Are they going to use you know something else for settlements? Or how are they going to you know delineate all of these different uh you know, derivatives and all of these different assets, what are they going to use to keep track of all of it? Uh, because what they're doing right now isn't working and um, they don't want it. They want it. They want to track it so they can control it. They don't want to track it. And so it can actually work in a free market because markets work much better for them when they've got a handle on them, which they have had for quite some time if you go throughout history. So, yeah. uh, I mean, you could say early on in the United States, things were decent here. It was a free market, uh, but it didn't take them long to kind of wrangle that back in. So, uh, and, it, and it's not just here in the U.S. It's all over the world. I mean, we've got... Um, there was more on this, like, and I guess it got the whoever originally tweeted it got deleted. But uh, uh, European Central Bank uh, Christina Lagarde, inflation is expected to remain excessively high for an extended period of time. This was just stated yesterday, even though for years and years, you know, in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, like, oh, don't worry, inflation's not going to be bad. You know, it's transitory. Uh, this is just temporary. You shouldn't fear. You know, basically, don't worry about inflation. We're getting, we've got it under control. And then boom, 
you clearly don't have it under control actually just get used to it it's not going anywhere anytime soon and i think that's the world we're you know to the earlier question that is the world we're going to be in we will experience high inflation now they will uh tweak the numbers adjust it try to make you think it's not 10 15 percent inflation when it is they're going to call it when it when they're calling it six and seven percent inflation you got to know it's closer to 15 to 20 percent inflation yep. uh show. and it's just going to continue so like i said just make in, make inflation your friend make it work for you uh that's no that's the best advice i can give you right now yeah I I just on the tweet that got deleted i can't remember who put it up but they were calling out something righteous they're like why aren't these you know, uh, government and regulatory heads not being held accountable for being so obviously wrong. Right. Why are they able to just get away with this and not be held responsible? Because people have a memory span or an attention span the length of a goldfish now. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, we need to break that. We need goldfish to Goldfish are not very long. Don't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, how do So, okay, that is a legitimate problem that we have. How... Because it does feel very difficult, right? Like, how do we hold these people accountable? These people are some of the richest, most powerful people. That's how they got into the positions of power that they're in. Yeah. So, like, we know when they were saying, oh, tra you know, inflation's transitory. It's not that bad. Everybody's out there saying, you know, calling BS, but no real repercussion ever happens. It's not like we can do it, I don't think, through voting, in my opinion. Like, do, what is a solution to you guys like again i only oh everything comes back to bitcoin for me the only way i know to do it is exit their money system and that's through bitcoin but other than that is there anything else that you guys can think of that you know that we can't how do you we hold corrupt politicians accountable in your opinion i got an idea okay Drew, go for it take it easy, easy? no yeah. hold on it's Drew. illegal Oh, called okay, safety okay. committees. Oh my God! No. 1763. <clears throat> Stop. The United States organized safety committees that parallelly operated against the wishes and intent of the British government. And what it is, it's a safety committee that actually ensures that the local politicians are abiding by what the people of that district actually are calling for, and it works hand in hand with local sheriffs. So in way, they can just disregard what federal or uh, you know governmental oversight is because they're operating and uh, legislating and doing law enforcement on a local level you have to start from the micro and work upwards in my opinion so that's um, kind of isn't that kind of what we have now with state representatives and local no. the problem is they're subservient to the federal government is what you're saying yeah, like basically state government yeah. should supersede federal exactly and they have if you start on a micro if your local sheriffs are operating directly hand in hand with the safety committees and the locally elected legislators, not the state ones, not the federal ones, then they can operate hand in hand and actually uh, govern themselves. What we have right now is local uh, districts are too reliant on federal money and mm. programs and all of the things we've gotten used to in public education and all that stuff. So it's going to be, if we were ever to do such a fantastic Drew party as this, it would be painful. But, you know, I think the uh, the squeeze, the, the juice is worth the squeeze on this yeah. one. So. Yeah. Drug gang says Drew over here whipping up a fresh batch of boogaloo. No, what? <laughs> yeah, and that's it. I mean, then then you get into a problem of of who watches the Watchmen. It, it just kind of devolves from there. Well, that's so. why it should be the people on a micro level. That's what the same. You mean the people of Walmart? Hell no, bro. No, like your local. <laughs> you joking? I mean, and, you know, you've got to have local representation, and you have to have insurance that your local representatives are doing what the people are actually wishing. And let, and if you don't, then you end up with. You know, your president falling down the staircase every day and, you know, everyone wondering if they actually hired him to begin with. So, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Scotty Mo said, at the next bull run top, I want to sell all, should I swap all crypto to be to BTC for a single off-ramp transaction? I think that's easier than individual tokens. Yeah, generally speaking, it depends on how much you're trying to off-ramp. And if you're trying to go OTC, like over the counter, most of that will be through uh, most likely Bitcoin, Ethereum, or a stable coin. Um, so yeah, you, I would say one of those three options, roll it all into that and then, and then cash it out. If you're wanting to cash it into dollars, that's, yeah. uh, the other thing I thought was interesting. Casino doggy says biggest news in UK today, not the banks. Oh no. Boris Johnson and party gate all over again, smoking mirrors, people smoking yeah. mirrors. So, uh, we actually touched on that yesterday, how all, for some reason, uh, you know, more and more banks going under, isn't making more and more news here in the United States. It's just a bunch of old old uh political hot buttons that they can push yep. at any point in time i was uh did uh did that happen did trump get arrested today? i don't think so it no. hasn't happened yet okay that would be so. no he That'd said it's nice. not supposed to happen until next week oh next was, week and he was he's ginning up you know support guys if you still if make you still play stop. those games please you make know. it stop yeah <laughs>
Just if everybody could just buy Bitcoin and exit the dollar, we don't yeah. have to play these games anymore. Yeah. Bitcoin is a great vote, man. It like, is. It's it is. the strongest vote on earth, I think, at this point, is what we're doing with our money. Here's I, another I here's another great vote uh on in addition to Bitcoin, which is opting out of consumerism. Mm. Mm. Right? Yes. All you every time, especially nowadays, every time I see a commercial, um, I just think in my mind, psyop. Psyop. Yep. Psyop. <laughs> yep. Because you don't need to buy things, really. Like once you're like in your 30s and stuff, you pretty much have all the things that you need. And you don't need a new refrigerator. You just need to fix the one you have. Mm. Well, go towards fixing and repairing and restoring instead of just raw consumerism. Okay. There's not, I think uh, credit card debt for Americans is at an all time high. 60% of Americans don't even have a thousand dollars in their savings account. What the hell are these people doing? I'll tell you what they're doing. They're under the spell of consumerism. So if you can opt out of that, you have found an incredible power. You will open up the floodgates of all this capital that you didn't even know that you had. Mm -hmm. because you're not buying <laughs> dumb shit on Amazon all the yeah. time. Opt out. No, I mean, that's a great, I mean, that was something uh, Gary Vee used to come back to all the time. She's like, stop buying dumb shit. You know, yeah. stop buying, what do you say? Stop buying stuff that you don't care, uh, stuff that you don't care about to impress people that you don't even like. You know, like that was yeah. his whole thing of like, you're. it's exactly what Nick's saying right now. That consumerism mindset of, I just need to get this, you know, oh, so-and-so has this. I need to get this now. I need a newer yeah. car, a faster car, a like a new refrigerator, I think is a great example there, or like an appliance goes bad and it's, you know, what 50 bucks 80 bucks maybe uh, maybe 200 bucks to get it fixed yeah. or it's or uh, i can go finance a, a new uh refrigerator for you know 90 bucks a month or whatever they do for yeah. you know they finance everything now. what like, about antique furniture <laughs> yeah. what about it what Drew, do i do Drew's, Drew's got a problem with what somebody, do i do yeah that consumes way too much antique furniture yeah. we were talking about that before the show started he's like i can't get to you to stop buying uh, antique furniture it's what all beachwood yeah <laughs> i can't stop Look, it i can't help you on that one i have the yeah. same problem yeah. so yeah. at Drew, least it's reused or whatever refurbished minimalism or... that's the answer yeah. you got to get people to buy into minimalism it's a yeah. great uh i like asset maximalism and uh liability minimalism there you go the more like land that. you have the more assets you have, the better you are off. The more privacy you have. Privacy is a long driveway. Max everyone, ass. everyone wants a long driveway, right? Absolutely. Yeah. You know why? It's because people can't see your shit. And you can add alligators. Moats. Long you can have a moat. <laughs> and you can have a yard. If you have a long driveway, you have a yard for your kids to play. Right, I'm going to reel this one back in a little Do bit. Do it. Yeah. TJ, save the show. Drew's over there talking about alligators next to your driveway. Uh, Kryptonic says, I don't have 1K in my savings account, but I have plenty in, of Bitcoin and crypto in my wallet. You know so you what go. I mean. No, that's a perfect. That is, yeah. I treat Bitcoin as my savings yeah. account. Yeah, you know, same. Like that's it's literally my retirement. So. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, what that's what, you know, really what savings are is, you know, re, you know, our retirement, what retirement is, is saving for the future, you know, storing your excess resources, whether it be energy value, you know, buying power, however you want to describe it in a safe place where, you know, it's still going to have the same buying power or maybe even better buying power in the future. Uh, but it's also time preference to, to what Nick was talking about there. That's why if you listen to the Bitcoin standard, they talk about time preference a lot. Being able to delay gratification is always, it's been a sign of intelligence for a very long time. I forget oh, yeah. they call it the marshmallow test with kids mm. or whatever, where like they, if a kid, they say like, oh, hey, I'll give you this marshmallow now. And if you wait, I'll give you two in 10 minutes. But if you eat it now, you only get the one, you know, and the kid that is able, I forget what age you're supposed to do this, but if you're able to wait longer and the, oh, you get, okay, now we'll give you two, but if you can wait another 10 minutes, we'll give you four, you know, and it, and it shows, you know, the rational thinking of like, oh, okay, I can wait. What is 10 minutes to me? Like I got all the time in the world. Yeah. Um, it's the same concept with all this stuff. If you need to get your dopamine hit from spending from, cause that's part of what consumerism is, is the psychological benefits and uh, upside you get from spending and buying and even think, you know, I was, Allie and I were joking about this the other night, you know, she loves to online shop, even if she doesn't buy anything, just going and looking and thinking and putting things in the cart. And then maybe at some point she checks out, maybe she doesn't, but the process of thinking about buying stuff even is a positive, happy, fun feeling. Um, so yeah, Bobby Dial says, kids are dumb. What do they know? Unbelievable. Pretty much true. You were yeah. once one, unfortunately. That's fair. What'd you, say, could, what'd you say, Decker? I said you were once one, though, unfortunately. Yeah. We all, no, hey, we all no, were. We're all were kids. <laughs> yeah. 
I was stupid too. Don't worry. Yeah, we shout out all. to everyone who was previously a kid in the chat. Yeah, shout out. Yeah, shout out to all the yeah the one time kidders out there. Yeah, previous children. That's what. Yeah, we're getting off off track. Yeah, but, no, no, it's fine. It was uh, we were talking about this as CI. Like Allie obviously is pregnant right now, so she just like had this epiphany that like every single person I see was like once a baby inside of somebody else's <laughs> stomach, like, and all of these people were in somebody's stomach at one point. This Ooh. is crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, okay. Uh, right. So I know I said I'd stop talking about banks, but now we got here. We go another one going on. Whoa, 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 First whoa. Republic Bank exploring strategic alter alternatives. Stop me if you've heard this one before. Uh, so you guys, you, I've already talked about First Republic Bank of San Francisco a couple times on the show. It was rumored as soon as Silicon Valley was up there, Signature Bank was up there. Their stock's been getting absolutely crushed. They're trying to settle this one a little bit more quietly. Here's, you know, you know, I, you know, I like my fun graphs. Ooh. So here is the asset balance sheet for First Republic Bank from 1985 Ooh. to 2022. So like here, let's see. Let's see if I can zoom in on this. Here we are wow, in 1985 wow. at the wow. beginning of the bank, just putting right along, running a fairly stable, secure business. Minding doing, their own business. Yeah, actually being a, you know, relatively competitive bank, you know, yep. not doing anything crazy, not taking on huge unnecessary risk. 2000 came along, you know. Nothing, nothing happened in here. And then, okay, uh, got acquired by Merrill Lynch in 2007, right before the other financial collapse, uh, kind of probably fell as part, you know, First Republic Management led a buyback independent again in July 2010, while looks like things were basically flat. And then, boom, I mean, wow, since 2010, second uh, IPO December of 2010 at $3.3 billion. All the way up to a value of thirty-seven billion in about what ten years? Yeah, eleven years. That's quite a move. What was I talking about with overcorrections? Yeah, I mean, if that <laughs> if that's not healthy growth, I don't know what is. My yeah. God, and yeah. that's what is that? Sorry, that market cap? Yeah, yeah no. this is the market cap of one bank. Yeah, and it's how people's wages have been increasing. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, you can take solace in that fact, Becker. Yeah, if I'm, I'm solaced. Yeah. yeah, look at that. That's incredible, TJ. What can we do to get Genevieve on the channel? She's so good. Uh, I mean, we can just keep asking. Dang like, it. Say, uh, guys, if you guys want to go comment, you want to get her on uh, around the blockchain and here. Yeah, we should just uh, everybody should go comment under. Uh, where did I did I get? Oh, it's right here. We should just go Where's comment. Uh, hey, we'd love to have you on around the blockchain. Oh, Send it. This is a, this is Gladstein. This is Him another, too. Yeah, I like Gladstein. <laughs> this is another. Uh, let's see, Twitter. And we had we had a great show last night with uh, Carlton Dennis, who is. Um, Friend of Frankie Candles. Yeah. So really, really great guy. Scott Milker was on. So yeah, Rug Gang, smooth, Nick, real smooth. Weren't you talking about mining hex, Rug Gang? I'm about to ban <laughs> oh you. Uh -oh. I'm about to perma ban you, bro. Oh Don't God. even. Well, I'll, I'll fight you. So that that growth on that chart kind of looks a little bit suspicious. Like, how did they raise Does their it? money? You know, <laughs> like, and during like some sort of financial calamity, which we've been sold for the past three years, like, how do they? Increase from eight billion to thirty-seven billion, right? In that short amount of time, and are, didn't they buy? Was this all pub, uh, privately owned at that point? No, it was public. Made? It was all it was, public. It was still public. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's cartel um, money. It just it smells like arbitrage. I'm just I'm gonna come out there and say it. I don't know what it is. Well, it's a consolidate. It's basically what they do is they were swallowing up other other banks, yeah. getting their bad debt on their balance sheet, showing it as an asset, going and raising more money based on their assets, and it just becomes this game of of feed, which is basically exactly what's gonna happen here. Yeah. This bank now sitting at. Thirty-seven billion dollars. Now again, uh, uh, potentially trillions of dollars worth of uh, derivatives on top of all this off the balance sheet. That's what's so crazy is they're allowed to keep all of this stuff off the balance sheet. Yeah. So now they're supposed allegedly sitting. You know, a lot of this is stock value and stuff too that's plummeted. So they're gonna, they were gonna be, they're gonna prop. You know, if they're sitting at thirty-seven billion dollars right now, they're gonna get end up getting purchased. Wow. You know, way down here uh -huh. in the probably sub 10 billion dollar range what but their actual value is <laughs> right what their real value yeah. is but what's yeah, crazy right. what they do then the bank that's going to come in and make that purchase they'll say okay we'll bail this we'll bail this bank out or we'll make this purchase we'll acquire this business only if the u.s government fdic the fed whoever it is will give us a 100 percent guarantee on all of these bad loans that's causing this bank to fail yep. Mm. Yep. we're going to take all of those loans and put them on our balance sheet and now 
the Fed is responsible for paying those debts, not the people that were originally responsible for paying for them. So we keep the assets, but we eliminate the risk. And so now our bigger bank is even stronger, has even more assets on its book. And that's how you get to this the situation we were looking at where the top five banks have mm -hmm. all of the assets and everybody's paying interest to them, even though most of it's all on, it's all on paper. So they mm. just want to keep that interest on all of those debts rolling. They don't care if the the ability to actually repay the principal is there. They just want the principal to stay there and continually collect interest payments, maybe even increase the interest payments, maybe even extend the duration of the loan. They'll do anything they can to keep those loans active. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it's just it's the sad state of where we are today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's not getting any better. And like, and when you're seeing again, just a handful of banks. Again, this is another bank with thirty plus billion dollars. These aren't small failures at this no. point. They're all big failures, and that's this system is not designed for that. But yeah. speak, instead of talking about something sad, let's talk about something happy, right? Let's yeah. talk yeah. about. Hey, uh, who said that financial collapse aren't happy? Well, the people, no. it's going to be hard for the Wee. normies, bro. Yeah. Someone, <laughs> someone in the chat said Genevieve is a fan of pre-workout. Uh, no, that's impossible. She does not have that kind of energy. Really? Pre-workout? What's what's that? Is that a joke that I'm not kidding? That's Nick is ever... like against everyone that takes pre-workout for some <laughs> weird reason. For us that have four children that drag our bodies into the front door <laughs> after working. 12 hours and we That's slam like, it's, 800 it's, milligrams of caffeine offend, offends oh Nick. Oh my so. God. It's, it's the way it goes. Please save the show, TJ. I'm sorry. I like pre workout. Yeah. No. See? No, no. See, I was on a whole rant last week. Got him. Yeah, All we right, can't well, get into it, TJ. All right, let's, yeah, let's not it. get into it. Let's talk. Uh, let's, this is a pretty good. Heavy. This is a pretty big partnership. Uh, you guys know we like both of these projects Polygon, Xerox Polygon, yeah. and Immutable X. Uh, Mutable X doing zero knowledge and uh, Web3 gaming kind of stuff. Polygon also has that rolled in. So Immutable will launch a ZK zero knowledge uh, Ethereum virtual machine Matic staked chain powered by Polygon. Mm. Uh, this is a huge win, not only for Polygon, but for game developers and gamers. Let me see if I can find. There was something. Oh, where is it? Where is Polygon's it? doing stuff, though. Oh, yeah, they're always doing stuff. I like those. There was some comment in here. I wish I could find it, but it's gone now. Where somebody, somebody was like, I know this is a big deal, but like, why does it really matter? And then the head of business development from uh, Polygon came in and answered his question. He was like, oh, well, that actually makes a lot of sense. I'm, you know, you weren't supposed to come in and actually give me an answer, but I appreciate it. Um, but what were you going to say, Drew, about? Well, I mean, the gaming sector, like we see the growth in, in Southeast Asia for gaming and like, you know, it's just like kind of like a fun toy we play with here in mm -hmm. America. It's not really viewed the same way that it is in Southeast Asia. Those people play way more video games than we do in Japan. <laughs> so, like, I feel it's like, true. you know, we we see slight use cases for it. But there was a time during the bull market last year where there was a lots of stories coming out about people in Southeast Asia playing the game and making more than the average person was making working their job during the time. So that got a lot of eyes on it. And I think that Asia is going to beat us to the creation of a kind of a, a, a metaverse or Web3 <laughs> infrastructure. I think that they're more intent on actually creating that and building that out as to where here in America, we're waiting for some flagship Call of Duty or Pokemon Go to hop onto the train and do it. Oh, yeah. I think we're going to see a lot of kind of organic from the ground built up games pop out of Southeast Asia in a really strong way. Yep. And we've only scratched the surface at the last... Um, Bull market. The last bull market was all overshadowed by NFT and pictures. You know what I mean? It wasn't done uh, with metaverse gaming or NFT gaming or anything like that. To a degree, in my opinion, that's what I saw. So I feel like there's a lot of room to grow for it. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Kimmy Shiro said Alex Becker keeps doubling down on the crypto slash NFT gaming will decouple from the rest of the space, and soon. Uh, I think there will be, it, 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 we will start to see some inevitable decoupling between crypto and stocks, between specific crypto niches within, you know, like gaming and NFTs within crypto compared to smart contract platforms. But I don't think it's going to be soon. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think soon, but, you know, next five years. Yeah, it's Next sure. six years. Well, I think I gaming think. could take a big stride forward in the what? next bull run, but I don't think it'll be, it's not decoupling and again it just it's kind of like decentralization it's kind of a continuum how yeah. how what scale are you measuring it on you know but when the big the bitcoin cycle will still be attached to a lot of the gaming projects yeah. in crypto for quite some time in my opinion like i think it has a chance uh web3 gaming has a chance to really 
establish itself as a true niche within crypto it maybe be the <clears throat> best winning niche in this next cycle but that doesn't mean in 2026 when we're when bitcoin is correcting that we're not going to see gaming projects correct as well because we're still in a massively you know we got to remember we're still in a speculation game all of the values that these games are getting placed on them right now is based on future potential it's not based on where they're at today mm -hmm. so when people when the realization starts to set in that that future potential is a little bit more future than people were first betting on it's just an inevitable market cycle the kind of the boomer bust that we're in right now mm -hmm. so um, all right well let me read through some of these we got some arbitrum stories and then some some projects that uh could do well due to the uh, arbitrum airdrop so the arbitrum airdrop hype helps zk sync which again we've talked about this one a lot addresses jump over 5x this is probably the next uh airdrop that i mean again mm -hmm. no guarantees on the airdrop but this could be one that would be another interesting uh play as well so airdrops were created blah 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 so arbitrum layer 2 scaling solution for ethereum announced the airdrop of its arb governance token on march 16th uh it announced it on march 16th it will be eligible march, march 23rd, 23rd right yep. yeah uh, with eligible receivers expected to get the token by March. Oh, right there, by March 23rd. The hype around its airdrop has helped other Layer 2 solutions, ZK Sync, see significant week-over-week -week growth. According to data from crypto on-chain analytic firm Nason, more than 39,000 addresses have bridged over 871 million to ZK Sync in the last seven days. The number of these addresses bridging to ZK Sync has swelled by 5x in the last week. That's a lot That's moving a over there. Uh, after the Arbitrum airdrop, ZK Sync and Starknet are regarded as the upcoming air airdrops with the most potential value. On March 17th, nearly 5,000 people deposited more than 536 ETH using ZK Sync Bridge, and almost 3,000 users deposited over 234 ETH using Starknet Bridge. So. Hmm. Again, uh, careful with bridges. Uh, you know they are mm. often yeah, open. It, it has a, a security highlight. There are some people doing some fake scams on Arbitrum right here, and this, right. this is an example of one of them right there. Um, oh yeah, there's definitely fake Arbitrum stuff. There's Arbitrum protocol token, or you know, there's I know people are trading like IOU things and stuff right now. I'd say be very careful with a lot of that. We're going to cover. I think a, a, you, I know you can make OTC claims on the purchases and stuff, yeah. but uh again i mean it can be done it's just again high risk high reward is all i'll say on a lot of that stuff yes. so not all airdrops are equally valued due to multiple factors such as people behind the projects and the project's use case among others however arbitrum optimism and zk sync are some of the early layer two solutions with proven records this has attracted more traders to the arbitrum airdrop as it could prove to be more valuable than usual airdrops and i tend to agree there's a lot of attention on this right now there's a lot of speculation on what the value is going to be once they actually get airdropped uh, this, I think, is part of why I wanted to cover this OTC stuff. Arbitrum token finds its way to the OTC market before the airdrop. Oh, boy. Yep. Following the Arbitrum <laughs> airdrop announcement, crypto users eligible for it are already selling them on OTC markets. Arbitrum community is speculating and selling off their unreleased ARB tokens in the over-the-counter markets following the Arbitrum airdrop announcement, uh, which is March 23rd. Isn't that what FTX did? What? Pre pre sold stuff, <laughs> pre sold <laughs> tokens that weren't on the market. Yeah, that's what they're doing with Pi, too. Yeah, <laughs> screwed up my Pi bags. Yeah, uh, Jack, who wanted to remain anonymous, has explained to Coin Telegraph that the craze to sell off unreleased, unreleased ARB tokens is based on speculations about the market cap of the token when launched. He explained that the price of one ARB coin when launched could be as high as a dollar. So most people do not mind selling at 0.5 per token and giving room for the possible profit of 0.5 for the buyers. So, you know, a lot. So this guy's saying have secured six figures of ARB OTC at an average price of 98 cents. Uh, so there's a lot of speculation on, I don't know if it shows in here. Like I've seen some crazy numbers. Some people saying $5, some people saying $10. Uh, no, this one doesn't have any of those. Doesn't numbers. have any of those in there. No. Um, so Arbitrum holds 55% of Ethereum layer two market share according, and this is already according to layer two anal analytics sites L2 beat with ARB's total circulation of 10 billion. The Arbitrum community will control 56% of the tokens. The airdrop will grant 11.5% of the total supply to eligible Arbitrum users and 1.1% to DAOs operating the Arbitrum ecosystem. Their main competitor in Ethereum scaling space is Optimism, launched its OP token nearly a year ago when it's transitioned to DAO governance. So it's very interesting to me. Uh, I don't know. Like, I guess the the best thing I think I saw something that was comparing this uh, airdrop to the Optimism airdrop. Mm. Uh, or I'm sorry, not the Optimism, the uh, Uniswap airdrop, which obviously did extremely well. Um, 
this one has probably got a lot, I would say, more anticipation than Uniswap did at the time. I mean, Uniswap was fairly anticipated, was fairly used. A lot of people were very excited about it. They were making a lot of money, just kept going up and continued to go up. Um, so it'll be interesting. This one, let's see. Oh, we got Arbitrum Ecosystem. What is this? No, yeah, we'll go through some. So these are some catalysts, like with the airdrop, I mentioned yesterday, projects that might pump upon more liquidity coming into the market. Basically, all the people that are engaging with these projects that are on Arbitrum will now have a new set of uh, capital in their pocket. And they may, they already know these things. So Arbitrum projects with upcoming catalysts, GMX, V2, RDNT. That's uh, v Radiant Capital. Radiant, mm -hmm. yeah. That's one of that super high uh, APY. Yield. Yeah, the APY is like 63% or something, and Nick slapped me. Yeah. But, you know, I'd still YOLO into some? it. I'm a, yeah. I'm oh, wait, no, for I'm punishment. Hey, wait, no, I'm up. I'm up. I bought two hundred and dollars worth, and now I'm at three sixteen. Really? All right, there you go. But I bought it when Johnny was talking about it like two and a half months ago. Yeah, I was like Radiant Capital, new Arbitrum thing. Yeah. But anyway, sorry. Yeah, that's the thing about this, guys. Is I think narrative trading is okay. Trading, maybe not the right word, kind of. But it's really important to follow the narratives. We don't. I don't have to tell you guys that. But I have watched stuff go past and you know fly by and like oh well maybe i don't understand it fully or um i don't think it's going to be that good or even but then now i was like well it doesn't really matter if a lot of people are talking about it understanding it's speculative of course but watching the narrative is a lot more important than i used that i thought it was all about the tech and what it can do and all this which is true because it's a layer two on eth but it's important to follow the narratives I've found because the narratives are what drive a lot of the hype, which is what drives the price all the time. So mm -hmm. just a little two cents there, but narratives, I, narratives, narratives. I agree 100%. The hype is one of the biggest factors in crypto in general right now. Uh, so there you go. We, mm -hmm. were, we were talking about radiant capital there, Nick, that you had didn't like in the past as a potential doing one. Magic is one we've talked about on here before. Grail. Pendle, please, PLS. What is that one? Please. Tokenomics V2 plus Radiant Integration. These are things, these are just projects that are based on Arbitrum, could do well after the Arbitrum airdrop. He says, of all the assets uh, with Catalyst below, I'm monitoring the ones on Arbitrum the most. You simply can't fade ARB season. So this is, this is, oh, I see. So this, this is a bunch of other ones, but these are really the ones on Arbitrum. So yeah. then we've got this one. ARB is certain 1K to 50K airdrop and ZK Sync should be more or the same. Here's a detailed thread containing the necessary interactions needed to qualify for ZK Sync airdrop. So I'm just sharing this here. I'll retweet with this with you guys. So I know a lot of you guys wanted to get in on the... Um, Arbitrum airdrop maybe didn't get in in time. I think it was early February was the cutoff for that. So here's the checklist uh, of where to go, what to do. Be very careful with all of these steps uh, as you're going along. Proceed process. with caution. Proceed with extreme caution. Mm -hmm. But uh, but ZK Sync is another one that we've had our eye on for a little while. Uh, I'm not too worried necessarily about getting the airdrop. I don't mind just buying it after the airdrop comes out. Uh, but I know, obviously, airdrops are a great way to grow uh, very quickly uh, when you're starting with low capital. So Arbitrum about to get 1 billion liquidity injection from its upcoming airdrops. Here's seven innovative projects below 50 million market cap, which will benefit the most from this. And again, this is probably some of the ones we already looked at. Uh, so for Factor Dow, we've got on here. I'm just going to go through this pretty quickly. Wait, I lost it now. I hate the way these threads work. Yeah, sometimes they, they get chopped up by people. Three, four, five. Now I got to go into five. Usually uh, I'm able to know them by just the yeah. logos, but I need to see. Yeah, now it's good. Give me a wrench in the chat so I can help with this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. All right. Well, that's not working the way I wanted it to, so. Don't really want to get into I'm that right sunglasses. now. Crypto sunglasses. We're almost done. What are you about to fight with somebody in the chat? No, no, no. There's just people pushing this Bard token. Oh. That's, that's a scam. Yeah. Oh, Bard token. Scary. <sighs> yeah, so... <laughs> that's funny. Alex Santos, you're funny. Um, all right, well, that's pretty much all I had for today. We'll, we'll continue to look at Arbitrum, ZK Sync, some of the stuff that comes with it. Obviously, that airdrops the 23rd. We've got the Fed raise tomorrow. So between the Fed raise and tomorrow's the, what, 22nd? Yeah, so but yep. we got the Fed raise tomorrow. Uh, Arbitrum airdrop the 23rd. Tang High upgrade, when is that? 
Never. Shanghai. <laughs> no, that should be uh, early April. Another oh, week gotcha, or two. Gotcha. I think they, you know, I don't know the exact date on that and off the top of my head. It was supposed to be late March and then ended up getting pushed into uh, April. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, It'll happen. It it'll, oh, it'll definitely oh, happen. Oh, yeah, so. totally. All right, guys, that's uh, that's all I have time for today. We do have about 500 people in here, 265 wow. likes, so we have enough people in here to get to our like goal today. If you guys could stop what you're doing, smash that like button for us. Leave us a comment. I'd like to know uh, what you guys want to hear us talk about. Let us know what low-cap altcoins you're looking at. Maybe there's some we can dig into a little bit on the show here. That'd be fun. Um, so, yeah, put your favorite uh, low-cap altcoin pick in the comments and mm. i will dig through those and see what you guys are saying and uh, maybe we'll pick up with some of that tomorrow uh until then we've got fluffy the sheep randomness mhma7 will yum yum i heart x crypto crypto sunglasses alex santos <laughs> uh editing team bud lightyear i be mike king poo and 78 dig rug gang covert fours manly crypto casino doggy cryptonic cryptotonic I be Mike King, White Rabbit, LJGG, Chemistry Bro, Corey Harden. We love all of you guys. We'll be back same time, same place tomorrow. Bye, Bitcoin. See you at the top. F the banks. Bye. Mm.